Hi and welcome back to another video from Effective Dashboards. In this video we will be introducing a case study and this case study or case studies in general are longer videos that are a deep dive into a particular aspect of reporting or that a particular requirement or some sort of functionality within Power BI. So in this case study we will be looking at weekly reporting and more specifically week on week reporting. So let's just go into our requirements and just flick to this um, this presentation here. So we can see here we've got the company has decided that all measures and KPIs will be reported on a Friday. Now I did cover this in a previous video and we covered how to set a custom weekend and week start date and week number. Um, but all reports will be on a Friday and they are looking to create a one page report which displays the backlog count so the number of work orders which are overdue and they want that report to show two columns or a list of disciplines in fact actually we will go and look at the requirements so they want to be able to display the number of work orders that are in backlog on the current date and the number of work orders that are in backlog on the last Friday or the Friday of last week. Okay, so they don't want it to be seven days ago, they want it to be the Friday of the last week. And that means that we're going to have to do some dynamic work to actually calculate that Friday. So here's the, the output here. So we want the department. We want the work orders currently in backlog, so however many work orders are in backlog in the current day. And we want the work orders last week, and then we also put in a change. So let's go back to our report. And that is what we're going to produce. So we're going to produce this report here. And it's not really good looking really fancy, and it's not the purpose of this particular video to get this um, this looking really good. We'll cover that in another video and um, the design principles. But what we're going to look at here is we've got the department, we've got the backlog count or the, at the extract date and we can play with these um, these titles here. But that's essentially what the latest backlog value is. We've got the backlog value last week. We've got the change and I've put in a little bit of conditional format in there. So let's get started. <clears throat> So the first thing we're going to do here is we have got this table there. We produced that in the last video. I'll put a link underneath here to that or up at the, the top corner here. And that video there, let's make this a little bit smaller, is um, really looked at the week number and set, set a customized week number to get a list of work orders, the maximum work orders in a particular week. And that week starts and ends on, so it starts on a Friday and ends on a Saturday. So the first thing we're going to do is going to add a matrix. And this is going to be the matrix that we're going to build up. And we are going to add into this matrix the department. And that's going to be the the row and um, we're going to add in here the uh, the backlog count that's going to be our backlog count and then we are going to leave it like that for just now okay so the next thing we need to do is look at creating a couple of new measures so let's add another visualization here a table and i'm going to add in the date and i'm going to add in the backlog here as well backlog count and i'm going to add in the week start date which we and the week number in fact actually no that's going to be enough okay so what we need to do here is in the 
for each one of these columns, we need to be able to, for the other column here, which is going to be the bat log count last week, we need to go and find what the value here was for last week. And in fact, actually, that's the bat log count. It's actually the, the latest bat log count we need in here. So we've got a measure for that. Let's just go back and get that measure. And this is one that you can cover um, in a course that I've created. So I've created a course that talks you through creating this dashboard. And it talks you through a lot of these different measures here. And one of the measures we create is this latest extract. And this latest extract measure <clears throat> looks at the backlog count for the latest date that we've got backlog or for the latest date that we've got in our extract table. So just to explain briefly the setup here, we've got a dates table, which is a continuous date uh, list of dates, and we have got work orders. Now the work orders are split. A work order is essentially a, uh, a document that explains how to um, go and carry out some work, and it's got a due date. And once that due date is passed, it is in backlog. So if we look in here, we've got two parts to this. The first part is all of the static data. So the data for that work order that never changes. So we've got the approved date, we've got the some of the risk ranking information, we've got some of the failure modes and how some of the reporting aspects of the work order. But for each work order, we've also got, and we can see this one-to-many relationship, fields which can change. So the status, the scheduled date, there's um, the description of light of different other fields that can change throughout its, um, throughout its lifetime. And each day we take a snapshot of these the, these values here. And they are identified by using the, where are we, extract date. Do, do, do. There's a work order extract date, which should be here somewhere. There we go data extract date. Okay, so there's multiple data extract dates for each work order. So that's important because we here we can see we've got the backlog count and it's just counting all the work orders for every extract date. In our data set we've got the month of May 2000, March, two, sorry, March 2019 and it's counting up the sum of all of the work, the hours, the, the the work orders for every day in that month, which is not what we want. We just want to see the work orders on the last day of the month, which is this one here. Let's have a quick look at that. And it looks at this here. It looks at the latest extract date and then calculates the count of the work orders for that date. We've got an add zero there just to stop it showing a blank if that is um, displayed on a card. Okay, so brief value there. This is covered in far more detail in my free course, which I'll leave a link to underneath. But we can now get rid of this work order count. And we've got the work order extract data. That's right. So what we want to show here is the list of work orders for the previous week. Okay. So if we go now and pull in the day of the week, Day of week name. So we can see here this value here on the 31st of March, which is the latest date here that's been pulled in, is 682 and it's split across these different departments here. However, we want to actually report on this in this column here all of these values for the previous reporting week, which is actually going to be the 29th of March. Okay, we want to see the 29th of March in here. If I just filter this here, I pull in a, the bat log again. Let's see this um, bat log figure. We can kind of mop this up. Bat log count. And I want to see the date in here. This is what I want to see. I want to see this value here being the date for the previous Friday, which is this one here, this Friday here, which is the 29th of March. And you 
if it be March, let's just in fact actually let's just do advanced filter here. 2903 2017. Okay. Ah. Okay, so it's filtered both of these, but it's fine because um, this is looking at the latest date and in this filter context that is the latest date. So, but essentially we want to see this value here and the latest value there. So we'll clear that for just now. We can put a bit of space here. Okay, so we need some sort of dynamic calculation that is going to find this latest backlog count value. Okay, so what we need to do is create a new measure. And this is where we need to create a little bit of mathematics. I'm going to attempt to take you through what we're doing here, but first of all, let's create the measure. Now, the measure itself is really straightforward. And how it works is we need to find the reporting week, uh, actually, end, reporting week end date. Now it's not a measure, it's actually a calculated column. And it goes into the dates. So we're going to create a new a new um a new calculated column here. And it's going to be called reporting week and date okay and it is equal to date dates date plus mod the mod of six minus the week weekday of the dates date and seven okay so this is um a simple little formula but um it's quite complex so don't let its simplicity um its simplicity um put you off here so or lull you into false sense of security like it did with me so let's go and look at this and we'll try and dissect it First of all, I want to just make this, um, we'll change it to, we'll change it to, we'll keep it, um, I quite like it to be with a date. Where are we? Day, uh, day. I'll just change it to that, that's fine. So we can see here that on this Saturday here, well, on this Friday, we can see that the reporting date is the date of the Friday, and that's for this whole week. Okay, let me just extend it out here. So every day of that week, we can see that the report, so the week starts on a Friday, and the first day, or ends on a Friday, so the first day is a Saturday, but we're looking for the weekend date. So the weekend for this week is the 29th, and we can see that each one of these days here, in the dates table is flagged as the 29th and then when it rolls over to the next day this one here that's into april and um, we've only got a couple of days in april but that even though these are the these are dates at the end of march the reporting week is actually the 5th of april because that would be the friday if that had continued down okay so how does this actual report work so let's go and Look over to this. Um, or how does the formula work? There we go. Right. So let me just try and talk you through this. So the first thing we have got is here's the formula here. It's the date plus the mod of six minus the weekday and seven. So first of all, let's talk about what a mod is. So a mod is explained here underneath here. 
and it's um, it's basically when the remainder after dividing two numbers. Okay, so you give it two numbers. So the Power BI function is mod first argument, second argument, and you divide the second by the first. So mod three remainder seven is zero because seven goes into, th goes into three zero times with remainder three. So mod three, um, three comma seven is three. Now we'll come back to this in a second, um, the mod of a minus number. So first of all, if we just look at these ones here. So on the, if, if our date is the third, is the um, 15th, which is a Friday, we want to then be able to, so the weekday on that is the sixth. Okay, so our week, this weekday function returns a day of the week um, for a given date. Okay, so we're going to feed this weekday function with the dates date field. And Sunday is the first day of the week. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., etc. So Friday is the sixth day of the week. So this value here is going to be six. So the mod calculation is going to be six minus six, which is zero, divided by six. Yeah, but and zero divided by seven, which is zero with the remainder zero. And we're going to plot. So this week ending date is going to add on zero to this date here because it is the date. The 15th is the week ending date for that particular week. Now we'll skip this one and if we go to this one here, because this is a negative and it's got a little bit of a special case. So if we go at the 17th, we want to know what is the week ending date for the 17th. So the week ending date for the 17th is down here, it's the 22nd. So how do we calculate that? Again, we look at the weekday, which is 7, and we have mod of 6 minus 7 divided by 7, uh, sorry, this one here, sorry, 6 minus 1, which is 5, divided by 7, which is 0, remainder 5. Okay, 7 goes into 5, 0 times, remainder 5. So the mod is 5. So we then take that 5 and add it to the date. So the current date is the 17th plus 5 the 22nd and we can see that that will be the 22nd and then you can see that continuing on for this one here Saturday so the mod of a negative number is the same as essentially adding on the the mod the divisor to this negative number until it comes to a positive number now this works there's a bit of um, there's a link here that explains it in a bit more detail but essentially what it does is is this minus 7 minus 1 is the same as mod 6 because we add 7 to that it's mod 6 um, 6 divided by 7 is 0 remainder 6 and this becomes a 6 so this one here becomes a 6 so if it's a Saturday we add 6 to the day and that takes us to the following Friday okay so hopefully that has explained how this mod works um, once you get your head around it and how it plays into this so this mod um, a strange function, not sure um, you know, if it's got, it must have some mathematical applications, but it comes in really handy in this instance here where we need this this value to be dynamic based on the current date because we will always want to return the, the, the Friday of this reporting week. Okay, now if you want to change this to a, maybe the reporting week was a Wednesday or a Tuesday or whatever it is you want, you just play with this number here. Okay, so that is the day of the week. So this is a Friday. If you wanted to be a Thursday, that would be five, etc., etc. So that's how you would be able to configure that. Okay, so back in the report now, and we have got this this um, this reporting end date which we need, and now we are going to use that to create a new measure, which is going to be the bat log last week. So let's create a new measure here. And this bat log last week is going to look at that mod date and it's going to return the bat log on that particular day. So let's um, start off by um, defining the measure for the, it's up at the top here. So bat log count LW equals. So we're going to start off by defining a variable. And this variable, in fact, let's keep it 
keep the code neat because there's going to be a little bit of um, so it's a latest extract date equals so we need to get the latest extract date or the latest date in the table that extract table that has got some information in it so we need to find the most recent one and then we'll work, work back from there so the most recent is the, we're going to use last non-blank and it's going to be on the dates date table now the last non-blank if we look at that in fact again let's keep it keep it neat it takes two arguments so i have created a video which i will um i will link under here for last non-blank but if you go here it takes two arguments it's a column name and an expression and the expression we want is battle count so we want to look through the in fact let's bring up that um, that description again returns the last value in a column for which an expression has a non-blank value so we're going to go through the dates value because we've got a through the dates column because we've got that relationship between the date and the work order variables table we can calculate the battle count and it's going to return the the date which has got the last date for which you can um, find a battle count and that is the first one we need the second variable we're going to create is going to be the previous reporting week so for each previous reporting week okay so we're going to use calculate and we're going to calculate the max of dates reporting end week weekend date and that is going to be we're going to calculate that for dates date equal to last extract date which we just looked at minus seven okay so the reason we're going to add that minus seven in there is because we want to get the last extract date for this particular date uh, we want to return this this reporting date here but then we want to subtract seven from it because it's actually the previous date we want so what we've done here is we've this without that um minus seven all we've done is get the um the latest extract date for this particular date here which is fine but we actually want to get that date and then subtract seven okay next we are going to return in fact we're going to calculate the result before we do that we're going to calculate the result result so the result is going to be calculate and it's going to be the battle log count and we're going to calculate the battle log count by filtering using the filter argument where all dates let's just um, tidy this up a little bit dates date so we're going to filter this table here which is all dates where date dates date equals previous report week okay so that previous report week that we've just defined there and we're just going to close off this calculate statement so we need to use calculate because we're going to change the filter context in here we're going to return the um the bat log value from the previous date not the most current date the previous date okay and then we're going to return and then it's just going to be the result okay so I'll um I'll add some comments into this and then um I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, so I've added some comments in here and 
I will um, talk you through this. So the first thing again is find the latest date that a backlog value exists for the current uh, in the um, for the dates the dates date um, in the current filter context. So it's going to find that latest date there. Next, it's find the reporting week end date for the last extract date. So find the, the associated reporting uh, week end date for that date. Then subtract seven to get last week's reporting end date. And that's what we're going to do here. And then finally, we're going to calculate the backlog count on the date of the previous reporting week. So we're going to go and find this backlog count for that particular day in the dates table. So let's go and add this in. <clears throat> and talk through it. So I'll add it into here. And let's hope this has worked. It looks like it has. Let's just tidy this up a little bit. Right, so we're on the 1st of March. We can't get any data before that. So if we look at this date here, the value for this reporting week, which is Friday, this Friday here, Friday the 8th is the, the weekend. Um, and that's what we've got here. The value for that whole week, for last week, is this value here. Uh, sorry, this value here. Okay, so that's the last reporting week date there. So it just sneaks in on the 1st of March. We've got 693, and that is the value there for last week's reporting date. So let's move it forward a little bit. And let's choose another date here. Okay, so for this week here, starting on Saturday, so this is a week starting, or the week ending, the 15th. The value for the previous week, we can see it there, is 701. And that is the backlog value here on the 8th, which is the value for the previous week. And then if we go to our most recent one here, We've got a value here, which is the current value on the 3rd of March, which is 682, which is up here. And the value for the previous Friday, which is the, the, the end of last week, is 686. And we can see that's the value there. OK, so let's pull this into our matrix. And here we can see that value there. OK. So this is, um, we don't need this anymore, we just needed this to, to really verify it. So this is how we calculate the previous week's value. Okay, so we've got the current week's value, which is the most recent extract date. And we've got the previous week's value, which is the Friday of the previous week. Okay, so hopefully that's um, that's been useful for you. So next, we will go and add some conditional formatting. Okay, so I've deleted this table here. And if I go now and before we add conditional formatting, I want to create the um, the difference. So it's just a simple measure here to um, calculate the difference between these two values here. And we'll call it backlog count uh, current. This is L week diff equals, and it's going to be um, backlog count uh, latest extract, backlog count latest extract date minus backlog. Hopefully, we've got this um, around the, the right way, backlog count last week. So the but let's just double check this. So we've got this has gone down by one. So let's just load it in first of all and then ask questions later. Current week. Yeah, it's gone down by one. Last week it was twenty five and this week it is um, 24, so it's gone down by one, which is good. Okay, so let's just tidy that up a little bit. And we can see that these are the values for each one of these. So in, in general, 
it's gone down by four. Um, they've gone down, they've gone down, they've gone down. Um, I'm not 100% sure why each one. Oh, there it's gone up. Okay, so it's gone down by six and then back up again by two, which is four. So it nets to four. So let's add some conditional formatting here, just as a, just to um, just to finish us off. So we go to the conditional formatting options here. We're going to add in some conditional formatting on this value here, which is the difference. And we're going to use a font color first of all. And I'm going to go to advanced. And I will soon be releasing a video on Udemy. I'll leave a link underneath if it's published. And that video is going to talk you through conditional formatting and a deep dive into basic and advanced conditional formatting. But for just now, let's just add this in. So we're going to use some rules. And we want it to be red if the value is greater than zero. If greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to, we put in here maximum. We want that value to be red. And we'll just select a red color there. That's fine. So now we can see if it's zero, it's red. We could actually just put it greater than zero, but let's leave it at zero for just now. For no change. In fact, actually, just to quickly change that. Greater than zero. Okay, so we want to highlight that there. So it's it's kind of highlighted. Um, let's change the format of this um, this table. I would normally spend a bit of time doing this, but this is um, change it to minimal. You can see it's slightly better there. Maybe we would change it, but what we will do is add some icons as well to, to highlight it even further. So we will go to the icon section of the conditional formatting at the bottom here. And I'll add in some icons to begin with, but we're going to change those. And we are going to add in our own custom conditional formatting. Battle count. We're going to put the data to the right. Send it to the middle. And we are going to use some rules here. So the first one is if it's greater than zero and less than I'll put in max. So max is basically just the highest number you can get. Um, then we are going to make that. If it's greater than zero, yeah, it's gone up. So we're going to put an up arrow. And then if it is, so let's just see if that's worked first of all. Yeah, so it's gone up. In fact, actually, that's all we do. If it's gone down, we're fine. If it's gone up, then um, we will just leave it as it is. And we could, um, we could sort that out and stuff like that. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll show you. I would just leave it like that because I like the idea that you just see the values that have gone up. If it's gone down, we're not too interested. But if you did want to put others on for it going down as well, here is how you would do it. Pretty straightforward. Go back to conditional formatting. Go to I uh, select the the field and the, the measure you're interested in. Go to advanced options, and then in the advanced options. We will add a new rule, and this one is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to, um, or we'll put in minimum, less than or equal to minimum and greater than or equal to zero. So it's anything above zero basically, then um, below zero. Uh, yep, and we will put a down arrow. To say that it's gone down. Now we can see. But it kind of subtracts from this one here, I think. Anyway, okay, so I think that is all I am going to cover for this case study. Hopefully you found it useful. I know it was a business requirement that I had to solve recently and one that um, is really useful for short term reporting. What was the previous week? What is the what was the work? What was the backlog just now? And how is that compared to the value at the end of the previous week? And that dynamically changes each each time we've got um, new data um, and for each day. 
Okay, so thanks very much for listening. If you enjoyed this video, then great, give it a thumbs up and a like. I really appreciate that. And if you would like to keep up to date with some of my um, with all my videos, I normally release something every week. Then um, click the subscribe button and click the wee bell beside it as well, and that means you get an email and a notification whenever I release a new video. Thanks again for listening, and I'll talk to you in the next video.